quality of your life, I have learned, has is directly proportionate to the amount of difficult conversations that you are going to have with the people in your environment in a way that isn't a make wrong. It's about an expressing each other and recognizing they have needs, I have needs, they have experiences, I have experiences, they have thoughts, I have thoughts. And let's get into a conversation where we can kind of gel between them and see, is this supportive for us on all of these different levels? And if you fail to have those conversations in your life, what happens? They're going to come up eventually for some, mm. you know, tragic or unforeseen event that might occur. And if you're not on the same page there, oftentimes this is where people kind of disassociate and get into the blame game or get into you this and you that as opposed to seeking understanding and a unification as, hey, we're just two, you know, protoplasmic beings trying to make our way on this little blue dot that's some inconsistent, <laughs> you know, weird place in the universe, right? Was there a, a life event that inspired you to explore your spiritual practice? Oh, yes, absolutely. So in 20, when I was 22 years old, I um, had a near-death experience. And, the NDE, uh, the good old NDE. The, yeah, you know, if you, and that event transformed, a, you know, a little rural Canadian trying to find his way through college and lift dumbbells in weird ways into a context that made the world look rather small and insignificant. Um, I was able to uh, have the life review, got to meet God. It's wow. awesome. So wait, what can you tell me tell me what happened? So what was the accident that that Yeah, no, so I had an overdose of oh, uh, uh, uh of LSD which was cut wow. with strychnine. Uh, What's strychnine? Strychnine is a rat poison which is often used to cut those type of things and so oh. and when you're dealing with blotter paper at the time and you can go one way or the direction and I just oh. got a bad batch or whatever and um so I went through the death experience and met God and really? got to experience a variety of lifetimes and uh, went to hell and saw what that was all about and believe me, you don't want to go there. And then I would come back through these different lifetimes. I had no background in reincarnation. I didn't have a spiritual practice. I had kind of abandoned formalized religion because I was like, okay, Jesus loves me, but then I, if I don't worship him, I burn in hell. There's yeah. somebody's not telling mm -hmm. me the truth. I loved it as Sunday school. I didn't like it in the regular part. So what happens, I think people throw the baby out with the bathwater in that situation. So I was kind of agnostic about what was that going to be. And then that after that experience, I was like, oh, this is what all these kind of weirdo mystics are talking about. And I began to engage in a variety of different practices. And I, I sometimes joke with my friends that I feel like I'm a spiritual billionaire trust fund baby. And that since that time, I've had an array of really far out quote unquote spiritual events that have really enriched my life, but I don't really know how I earned them because I know people that have been meditating for 40 years and haven't had anything even close to some of the experiences I had. And I'm like, it just happened to me. I don't know what to do with it. So I, I like to see it as, you know, you, you want to steward that forward for people who might be struggling with their own spiritual context in in a world that's very um surface level today. yeah devoid of it mm -hmm. so for for meeting god so a lot of people say with the ndes like a consistent theme i watched a documentary on ndes i think a month ago is seeing the tunnel seeing like the light tunnel and then going to meet source or meet god um what was that like like did you have a conversation was it a, was question. it a man was it a woman? Was it uh, Beyonce? <laughs> <laughs> it was all of the above. Yeah. Um, I didn't experience the tunnel effect thing. I did. I did have a an extensive bright life coming from a, a long distance, and I and I, at first, and I felt myself in a complete blackness. And in the blackness, I was standing in the blackness, but there didn't seem to be any floors, walls, or whatever. And in my experience, the out the light came through the outline of a door mm. and then the door swung open and was this extraordinarily brilliant light but not a blinding light not a light that took you out not a light that did anything like that it was it was if i go back to that moment in this moment right now it's 
it's this infinitely powerful, loving presence of such incredible magnitude that it obliterates any aspect of yourself. And it's, it's for eternity. It's all it is. It is, you get it as the sat chit ananda. Mm. And when I go there in my mind to do that memory, it, 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 the mind becomes silent. There's, n- there's nothing to say. There's nothing to do in the infinite presence. And then, <laughs> here's the interesting part, though. Then comes the life review. Because in that infinite presence of non-judgment, ener- judgmental energy, one judges oneself. So as the life review came up, I experienced everything that I did to anybody else. I felt what they felt. I felt the experience. Mm. And in that presence, there was a sense of self-loathing because I realized I had really not got my life in order at that point. I was really... Yeah, you were young. I was really... You were taking, taking rat poison on. LSD, so I'm you still probably working. had some stuff to do. I'm still working on it. Yes. I'm, you know, so like, and, 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 but... I've been able to operate from that position that I don't have to operate on faith. I've operating on an experiential reality. And that's where mm. I said, I, I gives me a distinct advantage over so many people who have to operate on faith. And so and then I, and then I was, I would go to this realm of hell and I would experience. Did you talk to this. like Satan? No, no. So I would say hell is more like a conscious realm where all the most heinous things that you could possibly imagine mm. are kind of like, smashing through your confidence consciousness in a rapid way and it, and it almost feels like a burning sensation in oh. your brain let me just fix my yeah, earphones here. Wow. it almost feels like a burning sensation in your brain and and then i would be transported to another lifetime and then i go back and then there is kind of these strange symbols when i'd go to hell and this hierarchy of lifetimes and things it was a very far out space uh, I was also taken to a, another realm where where all the people who commit suicide kind of end up in. It was a very interesting, strange place. In fact, a, f- a friend of mine she she showed me this video. She showed me this video the other day. She was talking about something, and she never gave me anything. She was, "What do you think?" And the video came up, and I was like, "Oh, that's the place where all the people who commit suicide go." And she goes, "Oh my God, that's what this video is about." Wow. It was like a kind of a yeah. pseudo spiritual movie or something, and it. I instantly recognize it. So how the people that produced that, knew, I, I don't know. But as soon as I went there, I, I saw that connection. I was yeah. like, oh, oh, wow. Like, Yeah, they say a lot of times with, with people that commit suicide in like Law of One, they talk about it. It's like that soul has to go to a specific plane for healing. Yes. You know, it needs to be in a specific place for deep healing. And then deep cellular, like almost like quantum regeneration to figure out the next best path. Because it's sort of gone off track to what was supposedly planned in the quantum field. And it's interesting with um, the near-death experience, too, is this is something that I've heard before, is that when you go to the review, it's your consciousness that is doing the review. And that when people aren't dedicated to a spiritual practice or loving awareness or self-compassion, that they get confused and they will choose to come back to earth or come back to this lifetime or come back to this, a similar parallel experience because they're judging themselves like without compassion and love. And when you're coming with full consciousness and compassion and love, you're able to say like, okay, I'm choosing to continue to go to the light. I'm going to the next level, the next dimension, the next parallel reality. And you can choose consciously to move on rather than keep coming back. Because if someone came without loving awareness or consciousness of themselves, they would come and they would say, oh my God, I've been a bad mom. I've, you know, I haven't been doing X, Y, and Z. I haven't been doing this. And then the soul is choosing to come back to this existence. So I was thinking this whole, in this lifetime, I'm like, I'm not coming back to earth. That's a decision I've made, you know, this year among other decisions spiritually. And so I've been aware and consciously of like the things that you're going to have to do to not come back to the earthly plane. Isn't that interesting? I think it's really cool. Yeah, that's interesting about Mm -hmm. the whole, I mean, so how did you come? Okay, so when you're coming back to earth and after you've gone to heaven and hell, how do you like live in the middle of Canada? 
Like, how did you? Oh, I didn't work out at all. Yeah. How, how do you? So I literally, this was just before my finals of a month or two, I think a month or so before my final examinations in university. I promptly walked out of all my classes and left because I was just like, this is child's play. The other thing was, was I, for a few weeks, I, I had this kind of like, I felt like a piano was going to fall under on me or something. Because what I felt was there was all these parallel universes. Mm. And in that timeline, that was the end of my life. But somehow I was able to jump my consciousness to another kind of paradigm experience and was continuing on. So it's like I got this, yeah. like all possibilities exist simultaneously. And we're actually it just experiencing life through a, a series of choices. We're identifying with this thing because you're all of the choices and simultaneously. But what we're experiencing, and that's what I like to call the nonlinear experience that tends to happen when one dedicates one's life to a, a, a spiritual pursuit. You end up in these situations that don't make any sense. And so when people talk about the secret or these ideas of the law of attraction, I believe it actually, the precursor to that is the law of intention. What you put out as an intentional field sets up where you could potentially lend rather than not. And so the law of attraction is actually the result of the intention, mm -hmm. not vice versa. It's not just sit here and meditate. It's like, what is the value that I want to do? What is the mission that I'm on? How am I going to... in uh, you know, in, enrich my life and the life of everyone else takes you down one of those other consciousness realms. And sometimes, as we all know, your life changes in a second. Car accident, you walk down the same street and run into your life partner, right? You know, like there's all, all, all kinds of little things that don't fit the logical paradigm, which we kind of have conditioned ourselves in the West, and that the outrageous and unusual and unexpected, and if you look at your own life probably, those are all the magic moments of the life that we cherish the most, which mm -hmm. don't necessarily fall inside of the predictable paradigm that we're so addicted to in kind of the, the Newtonian paradigm of mm -hmm. science here in the West that's been going on for the last 400 years. Thank you so much for tuning in to Morning Microdose by Almost 30. We hope you enjoyed waking up. As always, we encourage you to take what resonates and leave the rest. If you enjoyed this trip, tune into the full episode on the Almost 30 podcast. All episode information can be found in the show notes. Make sure to subscribe. And if this becomes a part of your morning routine, be sure to share it with a friend. We have new inspiring doses Monday through Friday. Follow us on Instagram at Morning Microdose and follow Almost 30 at Almost 30 Podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you in the vortex.